After a year on the road, I thought I'd get tired of traveling. The endless clatter of railways, highways, and everything in between. After a year on the road, I thought I'd get tired of traveling. The endless clatter of But as my train pulled into the station at Bellariva, I felt every bit as excited as the first day of my journey. A whole year. It felt like a lifetime. The places I'd seen, the people I'd met, of course, the forgotten treasures I'd given a new lease of life along the way. I'm a restorer by trade. Bringing our most beloved possessions back to life is what I love to do. I'd been traveling for months, working my way from one town to the next, fixing everything from family heirlooms to VCRs. Bella Riva was my chance to take a break. Unfortunately, that would have to wait until after I'd unpacked. The tools of my trade. No hope of restoring things without these. Looking forward to taking more close-ups of my fingers with this. My parents took this after I made my first repair. It seems like a lifetime ago. My favorite overalls. These will never go out of style. Who doesn't love a scrunchie? Practical and stylish. I saw a guitarist wearing these at a show once. Rock and roll repair woman at your service. Finally, I'd made it to Bella Riva. I'd come for the food festival, taking place in a few days' time. After living off TV dinners and instant ramen for the last few months, I was craving a decent meal. Of course, I'd need to earn enough money to pay for it, so I figured I'd head out the next day and find some work. My parents never wanted me to go. They wanted me to stay in their shop and have a simple, stationary life. I knew there was a world out there beyond the four walls of our antique store that I had to be a part of. I daydreamed constantly about the weird and wonderful places each of our antiques came from. I loved figuring out their stories, revealing the memories hidden beneath the screws and wires. My story in Bellariva began with a little girl and a voice she was longing to hear. It was my first morning in Bella Riva and I couldn't wait to leave my hotel and explore. It was a quiet town, its streets and alleyways basking peacefully in the hot morning sun. In the main square, meanwhile, preparations were underway for the festival in a few days time. As I handed out my flyers, I wondered what the people of Bella Riva would need me to fix. So far, everything here seemed perfect. I was starting to worry I'd made a mistake when I felt someone tapping me on the back. Hi, I'm Izzy. 
Do you know how to fix things? It was a little girl, maybe seven years old, who must have gotten hold of one of my flyers. She rummaged around in her backpack until she hauled out a battered red cassette deck. My tape is broken and I can't make it work anymore. I tried to fix it myself, but there's this metal thing in the way. Can you try? Aha! Those batteries look like they need replacing. Luckily, I have some spares. When it finished, Izzy picked up the tape deck and tucked it carefully into her backpack. Thanks, Maria. You're the best person at fixing things ever. No problem. Who was that singing? They're very good. It's my mom. She, she's not here anymore. Izzy trailed off. It was the kind of silence a cassette tape would never be enough to fill. When Izzy's friends called for her, she dug deep into her pockets, looking for something to pay me with. Eventually, she produced a grand total of a stick of gum, three mismatched buttons, and a yo-yo. I usually preferred a check, but Izzy looked so serious, I wrote out a full receipt. She seemed like a happy kid, but beneath it all, part of her life had been shattered. Part I wouldn't be able to fix. My first repair complete, I spent the rest of the day doing small jobs in and around the square. I was exhausted when I got back to my hotel and found a message asking me to make one more visit. The address led me to a quaint little house, a stone's throw from the beach. Bathed in the evening light, it looked beautiful, in spite of its flaking paintwork and chipped tiles. The front door was opened by a harried-looking man, still dressed from a long day at the office. Are you Maria? My name's Joseph. I'm Isabel's father. I'm so sorry she bothered you this morning. Please, come in. I'd like to settle up properly. On the mantelpiece, I saw the remains of a broken statue. Without thinking, I picked up a fragment. Ah, my father's statue. What's left of it, at least. Yet another way I'd have disappointed him. It survived a hundred years in this family. But five minutes with Isabel and... Do you think you can salvage it? Will you be able to see the glue afterwards? I don't want people seeing the cracks. Is this glue really strong enough to hold everything together?
Sometimes I think my daughter should come with a warning label. Thank you, Maria. It looks as perfect as it ever did. My father wanted me to make something of myself. He didn't have time for anything less. As Joseph put the statue back on the shelf, it nudged against the family portrait stood proudly next to it. So he was Bellariva's mayor. And that was Izzy's mom. They must both miss her so much. Sorry. I'm a little tired. I've been working late getting things sorted for the festival. There's only a few days to go. Looks like I'll be working late. Again. When I told my parents I wanted to leave, they always found an excuse to be busy. To avoid talking about it. I guess keeping themselves occupied was their way of pretending it wasn't happening. Joseph's work must have been taking up so much of his time. But maybe that was what he wanted. I just hoped he was finding enough time for Izzy, too. My second day in Bellariva dawned bright and clear. Another beautiful sunny morning. Walking into town, I passed cafes overflowing with customers cradling their morning coffees. I stopped, breathing in the smell of roasted coffee beans and freshly baked pastries. I was about to go inside when the owner of Carmen's, the cafe next door, stopped me. Uh, hello, Maria. Were you here yesterday handing out flyers? I have a job for you. Her place was petite tucked between its competitors as if hoping they wouldn't notice. Judging by the empty tables inside, though, her potential customers hadn't noticed it either. It's a bit slow today, but we're just getting started. <laughs> I'm sure it'll pick up soon. As Carmen chatted, she walked over to the counter and returned with an old rotary phone. At least I've got plenty of time to practice my recipe for the festival. It's a new special I've been working on. I was hoping to call my sister for some, uh, seasoning tips, but it won't connect. Can you see if you can figure out what's wrong? Obviously, we'd normally be much busier than this. You can fix it, can't you? I can't afford to replace it. Looks like this new circuit board is all hooked up.
handed the phone back to Carmen, she seemed almost reluctant to take it from me. So it's all working now, is it? I don't have to leave it to dry or let it cool down? Nope, it's ready to go. It'll be ringing off the hook in no time. That's if I can pay my phone bill anyway. <laughs> and the rent and the suppliers. Anyway, anyway, take a seat and I'll be right with you. Your coffee's on the house. I sat at one of the empty tables, while at the counter, Carmen had started dialing the phone. Hello! How's my favorite sister doing today? As she talked, Carmen became more and more tense. This didn't seem like a call for some cooking advice. I know I still owe you from last time, but I can't afford to take part in the festival if I don't pay. I could almost feel the eye roll at the other end of the line. You don't need to be here, though. Can't you just put the check in the post? When the call ended, Carmen brought me my coffee, her hands trembling. Sorry about that. My sister's decided to fly in for a visit. Oh, God, I have to get ready. Actually, I might have another job for you. Can you come by tomorrow? Thank you.